Hi, my name is Tamara and you are watching Things You and a Monkey Should Know. Hello, hello! Thank you so much for joining me again today. As you know, if you watch some of my other videos, I am not a professional anything except artist, but I have learned there are a number of things around my house and out in the yard and on my cars that I can do myself and often save myself time, money, and aggravation. So I hope you have saved all those things now too, or at least one. Well, today is a beautiful spring day, which means that it is bee season. So today we are going to talk about bee holes. Let's get started. So what do I mean whenever I say let's talk about bee holes? Well, get your monkey brains out of the gutter because it actually has to do with insects. And since it's springtime, it means that those insects are looking for a place to nest, lay their eggs, and you know, reproduce to populate the entire world. Now, we mostly see three main types of bees. Obviously, there are more than these, but we primarily see honeybees, which are the cute, tiny little bees that uh, pollinate flowers and, you know, make honey that we like to eat. There are bumblebees, which are a little bit bigger than honeybees, but they're pretty lazy. They still, they're good pollinators. Um, they like to take naps in flowers, so if you ever see a bee butt hanging out of a flower, that's most likely going to be a bumblebee. Now, honeybees and bumblebees can sting. They don't tend to be aggressive because they really don't want to have to sting because that means they die. The last third type of bee that we see the most often is called a carpenter bee. Now carpenter bees are aggressive and angry and they're just out to get somebody. Now the good thing about them is that they do not have stingers. So even though they come buzzing at you and act like they're gonna sting your face off, they actually can't do anything at all. Carpenter bees are the bees that we're focusing on today because if you have a house that has exposed wood on it, you probably have carpenter bee troubles. Carpenter bees like to chew. I think they're chewing. They're eating. Anyways, they like to eat wood. So if they're out in the forest eating dead trees, great, they should do that. But I don't really appreciate them eating my house. Now they make little round holes about a half, quarter to a half inch across. And then they lay their eggs up in those holes and then they leave and go do whatever carpenter bee stuff they have to do. Now, if you just simply fill in those holes with caulk or something, you're gonna wind up with a much larger mess than you began with because those larvae that come out also eat wood. So since they now can't drop out through the hole that the mother bee made, they're going to just chew all around or they chew a big giant hole in your wood. So it makes a lot more damage. So what we want to do is we want to set a trap so that when the larvae hatch, they die. Sorry. And then we want to seal up the hole. So first, let's look at what those holes look like. I'm going to show you a few great examples of what bee holes look like, but here is one and you see it's almost, I can almost stick my index finger in there. So that's a pretty good size hole already and yay for us, we can tell it's fresh because there's a little bit of sawdusty stuff around here on the outside. Here actually is a really bad example of bees uh, that it looks like probably somebody tried to Somebody tried to fill the holes without um, leaving a trap to kill the, the larva. And so I don't know where the original hole was, but this is very chewed out now. And see how there's a hole right here? That tells me that probably there's passages all in here. Just to show you what can happen if these bees are left unchecked, about <laughs> this bottom quarter of this hole beam was chewed up. And so last year I laid a trap in it and I actually left it open and then I got some wood colored Bondo to fill it with and now I need to just finish it out so that you can't really tell that anything ever happened. But that is what happens if these bees are just left to run rampant. They eat everything. 
Let's talk about the things we're going to need today. Obviously, we're going to need a ladder or a step stool, something to get us up to where those holes are so that we can tackle them. We're going to need something with which to kill the larva. And my favorite thing to use that I have found that works really well is diatomaceous earth. Now, it's a little expensive for a bag of it, but once you buy one bag, you'll probably never ever have to buy another one again because it lasts forever. And it is basically really finely ground silica. I know there's a lot more to it than that. That, but it is fairly harmless do not breathe it that's where it would get harmful as if it gets in your lungs but as far as like pets getting into it or anything like that I know some people actually mix this into their pets food so it's not too bad but again don't breathe it now we're going to need something with which to shoot that diatomaceous earth into the holes and I found this nifty little thing that is just for that so you need one of these. I'm not really sure what you call it, but anyway, it's a powder hole sticker in her thing. You're going to need something, uh, well, you're going to need a brush to brush off any excess of the, we're gonna call it DE so that I don't keep having to do the tongue twisting diatomaceous earth. So anytime that you have a little DE on the outside of the hole, we're gonna use this to brush it off because it will keep whatever you're trying to plug that hole with from sticking. You're going to need something with which to actually plug the hole. And in my case, I am using wood colored caulk. I'm hoping that this will cover all the holes today. Since I just found that really big one that I showed y'all, I'm not sure that it's gonna work for that one, but if it doesn't, then I will definitely go back with some wood putty. Um, you may need to have you know, a little rag just to uh, wipe any excess filler uh, off from around the holes. And I think that is it. So let's get started on those bee holes. So here is why I love this little squeezer tool so much. Instead of me trying to somehow floof the DE up in this hole, all I do is just fluff it in there like that. Now, if you have a large number of holes that you're doing, you probably will want to have breathing protection on because this stuff did just rain back down on my face. I'm not going to drag y'all around to every single hole that I'm doing, but I did just find this other one and one beside it. So I'm, while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and spray me a little powder into there. And you don't need the powder to uh, necessarily fall all the way out, or um, it does not need to fill it to the point that it falls out. Just need a good coverage, good covering of the inside of that hole. So we're about to find out exactly what is going on with this hole. I'm not seeing any DE come out. Uh, oh, come out of any. Oh, yep. Look at that. So these are all connected. So we definitely want to make sure that we have this well coated. Didn't know that could happen. Now I do. We are now ready to fill uh, the holes that we have done. I just want to show you all really quickly. This is what it looks like whenever a bee has started on a hole. And this is on this same beam, which means that we've had one busy bee up here. So it lets me know that I definitely need to keep an eye on this area because this seems to be very popular this year. You don't necessarily have to, oh, I can see their nest up there. Huh, it's all coated in DE now. You don't necessarily have to do your filler on the same day that you do your DE. I'm doing it today for the sake of showing you all a finished job. So you see how I'm getting off the little bit of excess that was uh, the earth that was on the outside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this with caulk, I hope. Yep. So again, you do not want to just fill with caulk without putting something in there to kill off those little buggies because they will eat your house even worse than they already have. So you may be wondering if you should fill this little starter hole with caulk. Well, that is entirely up to you. I would be more inclined to give it a little poof of this diatomaceous earth just in case that bee comes back and starts chewing in there again and uh, maybe at the end of the season go back and caulk it. So that's it. Pretty easy, right? 
If you've been seeing holes like that on your house and you didn't know what they were, now you know and you know that you need to do something about them. And if you did know what they were, now you see how easy it is to start taking care of the problem. This house had, it was almost like a whole beehive whenever uh, I moved here. So um, it's quite improved now. I couldn't have stood here maybe two years ago without being totally pummeled by bees trying to get me to leave. I hope that helped you. Thank you so much for joining me again today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do that now. Thank you very much to everyone who already has. Have a wonderful spring day and I look forward to seeing you again soon.